What do you do when you feel overwhelmed at work or have kind of just been having a tough time recently? There's three strategies that I'm using to thrive during challenging circumstances that I'm prepared to share with you in today's video. The reason I deliver this message to you is because I've been having a tough time recently. You guys may think I have everything figured out. I'm a senior account executive, 50,000 cold calls, 13,000 subscribers, making a lot of money for my age. But if I'm having a tough time, I imagine there's thousands of other people that are thinking, man, I, things are tough and I don't see them getting better anytime soon. We find ourselves in Q3, midway through July. The next long weekend is Labor Day in September. The economy is not doing great. It's harder to sell if you're a salesperson like me. Your stock market portfolio is down 50% like me. And it doesn't really look like things are just going to magically get better overnight. So how do we continue to evolve and thrive during challenging times that we ultimately cannot control? If you enjoy my videos, hit the like button right now and comment the iPhone or phone down below for the algorithm. Our channel goal is 15,000 subscribers, so make sure you're subscribed now if you're not already. Strategy number one to thrive during challenging times is to recognize and acknowledge that the market does not care about your feelings. Let me give you an example to show this. I was at Chipotle yesterday. I had shopped and I got groceries. I told myself I was gonna eat healthy and cook my food, but I've been in the office past 7 p.m. every night, so I said, no, nah, I'm just gonna go buy food. So I went to Chipotle, I'm standing in line, my bowl is sitting there at the register, and the lady at the register is sitting there. She's, she's especially calm, despite there being three people standing there waiting to get their pickup order. The phone's ringing, she's literally on the phone. The person in line before me saying, go get me a vinaigrette, go get me a bag of chips. And I was stressed out just watching her, thinking, man, all of the pressure is on her, the spotlight is on her. She is that, that final point to get people what they want. And there's like six people waiting for her to deliver including me as one of them. So I was like, hey, do your thing. Um, and she was just so calm the way she operated. And I acknowledged her, I said, look, I, I'm really impressed by your composure. Um, I, I think I would be freaking out right now if I was in your position. And she said, I've been doing this for a long time and it's usually best just to keep calm and collective and that ultimately delivers better guest outcomes. And I thought, Wow, she is a true professional and something that I definitely could embody because in my sales job, I get customer complaints, I get hung up on cold calls, and there's just these, these the minutia of the day just gets in my gets in my mind as a knowledge worker and, and, and my attitude can then be impacted throughout the course of the day. And I need to remember that the market does not care about my feelings or emotions. Just because I want something doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to get it. This week, for example, I was working a $100,000 deal, six figures, my first six figure deal, and get this. So we had gotten the vendor of choice. They gave me a verbal, Trent, we want you on June 26th. Send us the contracts. I send them the contracts. This is a over a $300,000 uh, total contract value deal. And um, I hadn't heard from them about, in about two weeks. So I'm starting, to, I'm starting to get a little nervous thinking, hey, you guys said you wanted us. You said you're gonna review the contracts. What's going on? I get a call from one of my stakeholders and he says, Trent, bad news. He says, we are contractually obligated to stay with our previous vendor. We had a 90 day opt out clause that we did not provide a renewal. So we have been auto renewed into a three year contract. We're not gonna be able to move forward with you. Oh, and by the way, I'm leaving at the end of the week. So I got off the call and said, wow, that's, um, that's pretty disappointing. The market clearly does not care that I really want something and I put in all the work to earn it. Therefore, it's being ripped out of my hands, something out of my control. And that's just the way the market works. It's ruthless, it's cutthroat out there, and it will exploit you for your emotional vulnerabilities. What I see in a lot of companies in this day and age is that there's a small minority that amplifies their message and complains when they don't like the way something is. They say, that's not fair, that's not right, uh, that, that shouldn't how it be. I want it to be like this. And, and sometimes they're given what they want, but the market does not reward you for feeling a certain type of way. The market rewards the value you offer to other people. How do you reduce stress in other people's lives? How do you make people's lives easier? How do you create more abundance for them, help them make more money? And that's my goal with this channel. My goal is to help reduce stress and give you all of those things and more. But remember, the market does not care about your feelings. Strategy number two is ask yourself, do you plan to expand and conquer or do you plan to contract and retreat? If you look at the laws of the universe and nature, 
Take a tree, for example. Trees absorb all of the resources around them because they want to grow. They want to grow into the biggest possible tree they can based on their potential. That's why you got some small skinny trees and that's why you got some big red oak trees in California as well. What type of tree do you want to be? Ask yourself, when you came out of your mother's womb to live, did you want to stay that small as a baby? Or did you want to grow and expand into the body you are today to become the best possible version of yourself you can? The natural laws of the universe want us to grow and expand. But a lot of people in today's day and age feel entitled. They feel like they should be given things because they went to college. They came from a household with a lot of money and, and they, they were told that they were a winner growing up. And when you get in the marketplace, it does not matter. None, none of those things matter. And a lot of people get discouraged by that, including myself at times. And I'll say, I just got hung up on. I don't want to make any more calls. Oh, that executive gatekeeper, I know that they're going to tell me, no, I just shouldn't make the call. Or, hey, I'm not feeling like it. Or, no, you know what? I'm going to go play on my social media and watch TikToks instead of making my calls today. Those are all retreating and contracting behaviors and actually will greatly limit your success and will lead you to feel more overwhelmed, insecure, anxious, and like you have no control of your life. The only way to gain control and to overcome that sense of feeling overwhelmed is to decide, I am going to expand and grow and conquer at all costs. And that's the decision I make and that's why I stay in the office. And as some people say, Trent, you need a personal life. Hey, how's everything going? And I say, everything's going well because I love what I do. I enjoy working. And it's those people that are giving you the advice to work less hard. They're the most emotionally insecure of all of us is because when they're trying to tell you to work less hard, they're deeply insecure that they're not actually trying to work and expand at the level you are. So give yourself an excuse to say, hey, I'm gonna grow and expand because that's what the universe wants me to do and that's how I'm actually gonna overcome that sense of feeling overwhelmed. The third strategy that I wanna get you is that you may be looking ahead into the future. Anytime we look ahead into the future, we're, we're not great at forecasting how we're actually gonna feel. And th that's why people get so nervous when they skydive. They can't eat breakfast that day. They're so nervous because they're wondering, oh, well, what's gonna happen? I don't know what's gonna happen. There's no way for you to actually understand how you will feel in a future circumstance because you are currently stuck in the present. So when you look ahead, that creates this sense of anxiety. It's this gap between where you're at today and your emotional state and how you think you might feel in the future. When you actually jump out of the plane, it's euphoric, it's blissful. It's, and I've never actually done this, this is how I've heard people describe it, but you're, you're, all the fear goes away because everything you've wanted is on the other side of fear. So when you find yourself looking ahead into the future, especially in sales, you find yourself sitting here July 18th, okay, I gotta close a lot of revenue between now and September 30th, what's gonna happen? And it starts to create this feeling of uncertainty and anxiety and you feel overwhelmed and it goes to that retreating of saying, I'm just gonna retreat, I'm gonna try less hard, I don't actually need it, I didn't actually care in the first place, but you've already decided that you're you're going to grow and expand. So one thing I am very conscious of is to live in the present because there's no moment more important than this moment we're sharing right now. So I appreciate you watching this video, but when you leave this video, remember there is no moment more important than that current moment you reopen your laptop and decide to start working. A quote I, wrote, I read that I really like that I want to get you is that we must be committed to the process without being emotionally attached to the results. Think about that. The process rather than being overly emotional to the results. The results, I hit quota, I miss quota. I'm happy, I'm sad. The process, okay, I'm gonna make my calls, I'm gonna send my emails, I'm gonna find my new prospects, I'm gonna prepare for that demo, I'm gonna deliver the best discovery call and add as much value as I can. When I show up to that negotiation, I'm gonna respect the process, I'm not gonna go in overly emotional, and I'm gonna create a win-win situation that adds value to the customer's business while also serving me and my organization's needs. That's what it looks like to live in the moment and focus on the now. In addition to looking ahead, a lot of us also reminisce and look back and stress ourselves out about the past as well and reliving past moments. Oh, that thing went well. Oh my gosh, I embarrassed myself. Oh, I must have sounded so stupid. I, I, I think I do a pretty good job of not living in the past. I really don't think about the past at all. Um, sometimes I'll think about memories, but the, the past to me is no longer existent. It's not a real thing, it's abstract. I take the lessons I learned from mistakes I made and apply them to my current state to try and drive better future outcomes. But I just focus on right now. 
And another strategy to think about overcoming that sense of feeling overwhelmed is recognizing that because I'm going to expand and grow, it's gonna be really hard. And rather than trying to say, okay, once I get that promotion, once I get $5,000 of passive income per month, once I get to that next level, or once I meet that guy or girl that I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with, then it will be easy, then I will be happy. If you find yourself in that moment trying to seek comfort, you will always be uncomfortable. Rather than trying to hope or wish things are easier, why not try and deal with hard better? Think about that. Why not try and deal with hard better? So I used to play sports in high school and I'd always think, ah, oh, once I get done with these sprints, once, once I get in the car and drive home, then things will get way easier. Oftentimes it's when I get in those moments, things get even worse because I'm starting to seek comfort. And it's the same thing in my sales job. When I look at the calendar ahead, I'll say, wow, um, I am nervous for these upcoming meetings because I never feel equipped or prepared or like I know what I'm doing. And that's how everyone feels, by the way. So rather than looking at that, I say, what can I do these next 15? What can I control these next 15 minutes? How can I execute? Recognizing the only easy day was yesterday. So I don't look in the past, I don't overthink things. I recognize the only easy day was yesterday. Today is gonna be hard. And I don't, I, I don't want it any other way. I want things to be hard. And I may feel a little overwhelmed, that's okay, but the market does not care about how I feel. I decide that I'm gonna expand at all costs because that's what sales is ultimately all about. It's all about expansion, finding revenue, making money. That's why you watch videos like this one is how can I understand and apply some of these strategies to become more productive, more efficient, or just change my attitude to say, I'm gonna go make it happen at all costs. And that is my mindset going into this week. That is my mindset going into the month, the quarter, the year, and forever. I'm going into expansion, similar to how that building is now giving me the message, hey, it's time to wrap this video up. If you enjoyed today's video and haven't already, hit the like button, comment the phone emoji, whatever you gotta do below for the algorithm. I want this video message to reach as many people as possible. Um, make sure you're subscribed as well. And I'm also gonna link, first link in the comments below, um, Sales Prestige, it's my second channel, it's my podcast channel. Um, I recorded a new episode that's coming out this week. I think you're really gonna enjoy it, so make sure to go subscribe to that channel as well. Have a great week ahead, talk to you soon, bye.